In our prior training segments, we learned that hot goes to cold. We learned that to maximize heat transfer, we have to cause a change of state. In this training segment, we're going to introduce you to the coil called the evaporator coil. The evaporator coil is where all the heat from the conditioned space is absorbed into the refrigerant so that it can then be transferred to the outdoor air and rejected. You're going to learn how evaporator coils transfer heat and you're going to learn about very special devices called metering devices. Let's get familiar with major components of the air conditioning system. We're going to start with the evaporator coil because this is where the system absorbs heat. Remember, in order to reject heat, you have to absorb the heat and it all begins at a component called the evaporator coil. The evaporator coil is the cold component of the system. Remember from our prior video, hot goes to cold. The refrigerant that is contained in the evaporator coil is at a low pressure and a corresponding low temperature. And you need to remember this about refrigerants. When the pressure in the system is low, the temperature is low. When the pressure in the system is high, the temperature is going to be high. Well, in the evaporator coil, we need to absorb heat. Therefore, the coil temperature must be colder than the air temperature that hits the coil. And evaporator coils can absorb heat because of a very special device called a metering device. When a refrigeration system is running, the compressor pumps a high pressure warm liquid in a line called the liquid line. The liquid feeds into the evaporator coil right here and the liquid hits a very special device called a metering device. The metering device right here is nothing more than a pressure drop. It is a restriction to flow. The liquid hits this metering device and the pressure of the refrigerant drops. When the pressure of the refrigerant drops, its temperature drops. And this is important because we want the temperature of the evaporator coil to be much colder than the air that hits the coil. A fan will blow the air across the evaporator coil. The air that hits the coil has a lot of heat in it. This high pressure liquid, which is at a warm temperature because its pressure is high, enters the metering device and its pressure is dropped. The liquid and vapor mix that spits out of this metering device is at saturation temperature. It is a mix of liquid and vapor and it is very cold because the pressure in the coil right here is very cold. The cold liquid enters this coil, hot goes to cold, and we cause a change of state, just like melting ice. This liquid circulates through this coil and it is boiled off into a cold vapor. The vapor exits this coil at a very cold temperature and a low pressure. It's funny that you would think that the vapor exiting this coil could be cold when it contains all of the heat from the air, but it is very cold. It is cold because at low pressure, the refrigerant is cold. It absorbed massive amounts of thermal energy because it changed from a liquid into a vapor, just like melting ice. The air that leaves the evaporator coil contains less heat than the air that entered the coil. The heat is now contained in the refrigerant vapor. The outdoor unit's compressor is going to pull this vapor to the outdoor coil. In the outdoor coil, we're going to learn that we are going to reject the heat that we picked up at the evaporator coil. When we talk about metering devices, we're really talking about two types of metering devices common in our field. The first type of metering device shown here is a piston. It is a, called a fixed metering device. It is nothing more than a piece of brass with a hole bored through it. Typically, if there is a service failure at the piston, it's going to be because debris plugged the piston. A technician can access the piston by removing a fitting right here and he will clean the piston and reinstall it. There's no need to replace the piston. On the other hand, there are special metering devices called thermostatic expansion valves. Thermostatic expansion valves 
are special metering devices that do a very good job of regulating the flow of refrigerant into the evaporator coil. They feature a sensing bulb that has a charge of refrigerant in it. The sensing bulb is attached to the suction line at the outlet of the evaporator coil. The sensing bulb monitors the flow of refrigerant liquid into this coil and it can actually change its orifice size to meet changing system conditions. It is a very sophisticated metering device. It provides premium control over refrigerant flow and it provides a corresponding increase in efficiency to the air conditioning system and they are highly desirable. Occasionally over time or due to field problems, a sensing bulb on the metering device may lose its refrigerant charge. If the sensing bulb loses its refrigerant charge, the metering device must be replaced. The benefit to the metering device here, the expansion valve, is the fact that the efficiency of the system is maintained at a higher level. The benefit to a piston type metering device is that the only thing that can really fail is they can fail plugged, but they can be cleaned out by the technician and reinstalled. If the expansion valve fails, it must be replaced. Let's review the key topics we just learned about. We learned that pressure in the evaporator coil is lowered by a device called a metering device. We learned that low pressure refrigerant in the evaporator is very cold, and therefore the reason we drop pressure is to make the refrigerant cold, because always remember, hot goes to cold. We learned there are two types of metering devices expansion valve types and piston types. We learn that refrigerant enters the metering device via a connection to the liquid line and we learn that refrigerant exits the evaporator coil via a connection to the suction line. Let's go ahead and continue now with our training program and we're going to learn about compressors and the outdoor condensing unit.